You don't believe me, do you? You don't think technology is like magic. Come on. That's why you click this video. Well, I didn't come up with this. I'm not that smart to come up with this. But Andy Crouch, uh, thinker, philosopher, writer, author, the man right now, one of my favorite dudes to learn from. Uh, he made this amazing comparison. And I think if you watch until the end, you might not 100% agree, but you might be persuaded just a little bit. Human kind of meta theme or motif of magic. It goes all the way back to the garden imagery and now is like the newest app or whatever. Like magic, high promises, low demand at first and then. So you sussed out this idea in your most recent book of the difference between devices and instruments and you tie that to magic. Can you just yeah, yeah, go yeah. there? Yes, absolutely. So here's where p you often run into some resistance when you try to tell this story. People are like, well, the thing is, like the ancient, those those pagan religions, they don't they don't work. Like that magic doesn't work. Our, but it's, our it's stuff all, actually—it's all fake, you right. know. Our stuff actually works, right? And and uh, you know, we can actually like fertilize the ground and have it be more fruitful, like nitrogen fixing and all that kind of stuff. We know how that works now. Oh, uh, I. Um. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Sorry. So. The trick, Your Wendell Berry in my mind saying no. Well, <laughs> so there is a question, will it keep on working? Yes. It, it, yeah, sure, the idol mm. worked at first. We're only 100 years into the story of technology, yeah. as I would define it. And that's like a, a blink of an eye in the history of human religion, if this is a new religion. Yeah, and the planet, Come yes. On. Exactly. Yeah, so what that. are the law, the generational consequences? We're not there yet. But I would actually say... Uh, I'm saying... I, I think we're already seeing those consequences now. But that's besides the point. It does work in certain ways because it, technology is actually two things combined. Technology, I would say, is science plus a dream. Science plus a dream. Science is the patient, um, disciplined, human, humble, patient, humble, disciplined, human examination of the world as it actually is. And it was led in, in its modern form very notably by Christians and others of faith, Jewish also. Um, people who believed in a creator God, people who believed in the rationality of the cosmos, the intelligibility of the cosmos. Many Muslims early on, right? Yeah, oh, well, absolutely. Uh, the, uh, the mathematics of the Muslim world in particular, as well as observational uh, kind of uh, techniques developed in that world. Um, James Clerk Maxwell, who, uh, you know, Maxwell's equations of electro, uh, electromagnetism. I'm going to nod uh, my head like I know what the heck you're talking about. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Just keep on it. Yep. He founds the Cavendish Laboratory um, at uh, Cambridge University and has inscribed over the entrance in Latin, Psalm 110, great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Great are the works of the Lord. So science the began, theology of science. began with this, uh, there's a, an amazing book about it called The Penultimate Curiosity that traces the way science and religion actually have been friends, almost the whole history of, of inquiry into the world. There are two ways of inquiring into the world. And when you inquire patiently, humbly, in a disciplined way, you discover the goodness and the, and the beautiful intelligibility of the world that is meant for us to use. Yeah. So, gosh, did, did you understand what he just said? Everyone, there's this false binary that it's science versus faith. <laughs> and depends how you define science, I guess. But, bro, <laughs> this is why we need <laughs> to listen to very intelligent, wise, older people instead of TikTok influencers that have no idea what they're talking about. The science side of technology, A, really does work like at an electromagnetic level. Maxwell's equations actually describe reality and give us access to a kind of power in the world that we're meant to have, I would say. But it's plus a dream. The dream is magic. Jeez. And the result oh of science gosh. plus a dream. So when we start to dream. When you say the dream is magic, it's just an easy, that's, quick solution that's what we click to get rid of our pain. And when mm. we started asking ourselves, gosh, if we could figure out how, how the world works, what would we do with it? We thought magic. Because <laughs> in the not Western. Love. Not love. Francis Bacon, Gosh, writing at the dude. Dawn of the Alignment, glimpses what, might, what we might come to know in the next few centuries. And he says, well, what we need to do is relieve the human estate. He sees life as just full of toil and labor. He's like, well, we need to like, lift the burdens from human beings. And, and I'm not saying, I mean, you and I benefit tremendously Absolutely. from the way machines lifted the burden. But, but the, and then Arthur C. Clarke comes along in the middle of the 20th century and famously, famously says, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable yes. from what? What word does he choose? Magic. Mm -hmm. That's our dream. We're like, oh. If we now know how the world works, I could just flip a switch and a light would come on. I can push a button and I'm no longer cold. I don't have to chop down a tree and cut it up and exactly. drag it in the house and start a fire and yeah. Yep. So we thought, here's what we'll do. Once we know, we'll do magic. And this gave rise to what Albert Borgman, who's the philosopher who is yeah. most influenced by Absolutely. Book of Practices. Yeah, I love well, his. What's, what's his book, Living in a Focus? Is that the popular read one? Maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, I love uh, that. Yeah, one. he has a couple of books. The Technology and the Character of Contemporary Life is the uh, almost impenetrable one. Yes, <laughs> with I'll all read the, that one. All yes. the really good ideas. <laughs> I think I read um, the like, Sabbath reading one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Um, I, <laughs> uh, Borgman, in, in his first book, I mean, it's amazing sometimes how lives 
of people who are really influential. They, they just see something so important at the beginning of their careers, and they spend the rest of it just working it out. And he coined this term, the device paradigm. And this word, he, use, he appropriates or uses this word devices really to specifically refer to the form of, of science plus a dream that allows us to simulate a kind of magic where I press a button and the thing happens. Uh, Gosh. And, and the way I might put it is a device allows you to make a difference in the world without having to become different in any way. Whoa. So you remove oh, for me. Goodness gracious, dude. I think it's a problem with what we're seeing, though. Like, these things are actually forming us into, and actually deforming us into people that are more anxious. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> more anxious, more messed up. And, but what if they're, what if they can be used for actually good? Which it could be. Form of, of science plus a dream that allows us to simulate a kind of magic where I press a button and the thing happens. Uh, and, and the way I might put it is a device allows you to make a difference in the world without having to become different in any way. Whoa. So you remove formation, you remove character, virtue from power. Exactly. So the power to make music is a human power, an amazing human power. But it requires every, an instrument. Uh, requires, I well, it, in, in a strict sense, it uh, just starts with your body. Okay, but yes. every culture extends the Singing, body through. Singing, clapping, instance. whatever. Right, right. So yeah, you can just sing, clap, clap stomp, Dude, and these guys are so amazing good. music, and it can be do yes. it all on its own. But human beings extend that, and and when we think of this in other domains, we think of it. We call it tools. Tools are just extensions of human beings, and an instrument. We think of that in music is an extension of the human ability to make music. Um, to play the instrument, or indeed to use any tool, requires me to become something different. And That's then it will amplify that power and then I or have that a virtue new... or that it will channel that, but it has to come from you. Exactly. I'm, I, you can't take the human out of the loop, right? So if you sit down a classical grand piano, it doesn't, it's not a player piano. It just, it waits for someone to play. But the person who plays has to have gone through this Years of formative practice process, and right? formation. You have right. to become the kind of person who can play it. it right. So you oh have to become gosh. different in order to make the difference in the world called piano music. But Apple Music. Exactly. You just got to push a button. And music plays. And so we now have more music being played in the ears of people in the Western world than any, any society in history, if by play you mean you press play and, and, music, and tune pitch sound starts to play. And I would imagine, I don't know this, but less and less and less music and being I am absolutely played. positive. Less and less music being played, if by that you mean a musician in, uh, in community with other people because it's a deeply communal act, is actually... Fun fact, um, every time I hear Andy Crouch's voice, um, because I'm listening to his audiobook, uh, The Life We Long For, um, yeah, I think of Planet Fitness, my gym and Planet Fitness. Isn't that crazy how you can, like, hear somebody's voice and you're, like, in this environment? Like, I, I almost smell the gym. We, we, we can go back to that. I'm sorry. And, and the interesting thing about our phones, our computers, our tablets, is they can either be the ultimate device, that is, they can just do magic for us, and you can, you can never learn to play anything, and you can, your life can be full of music, or they can be the ultimate instrument. You can write a book on one. Exactly. You can mm. design a house. You can, yeah. And, but in order to do that, you will have to choose a way of formation that frankly is against the grain yes. of, the, of what the technological world presents to us as the good life, which yeah. is the magical life. Which is power without virtue, without love. Power. power without virtue. That's what we're being sold. That is what Apple is, being, is, is literally selling us. Oh my gosh, dude. That's why this thing... Oh my goodness. That is literally genius. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm just seeing how everything is being sold to us that way. And yet, as we're being sold this lie, the good life of like carefree, worry-free, pain-free, we, <laughs> we end up experiencing more pain, I feel like. Yeah, that's incredible. That's crazy. Or without dependence, uh, you know, ability without virtue. Uh, John Tyson says, abundance without relationship. It's all that wrapped together. And every moment we spend chasing that, we are undermining our ability to be persons, to bring into the world the good we were made to bring into the world, to actually create using the, the science that gives us the intermediate layer of computation. Gosh. And, and we all know, and, and I think there is this spiritual thing, there's this lure away from that engaged life to the disengaged life that we are now constantly tempted from to. active to passive, from difficult yeah. to easy. So what I'm hearing you say... Man, um, so how do you now... <laughs> how am I? I'm just thinking my own personal life because I can't control what you do, but I can control what I do. How do I make this technology an uh, instrument and 
for good instead of a device that could kill me. And that's what we have to face. That's that's the question we have to face. Because I want to be full a full person like Andy says, one that can love God. Yeah, I would just I just recommend you take his listen to his book. I'm listening to it, but read his book, The Life We Long For. It is a br- like literally a brilliant um, thesis, a brilliant, just a brilliant book about the new digital digital world we live in today. So, yeah, if you got any value, subscribe because I my brain is like <laughs> fried. <laughs>